I always liked mathematics uh, since the very beginning, as far back as I can remember. Uh, and my uh, mother is a mathematician, so I always had lots of questions for her when I was growing up. And she was, uh, she was always there to answer my questions, and if I didn't know the answer, she would always encourage me to go discover it on my own. And that was, so that was a great source of encouragement and inspiration that I had when I was growing up, to have my mother there. Uh, as far back, uh, maybe two or three years old, I remember uh, liking to multiply big numbers and, <laughs> and uh, playing with mathematical toys, those things, I, those things I always enjoyed very much. I was born in Canada, but I grew up mostly uh, in the United States, uh, in uh, Long Island, New York. I also spent a lot of time growing up in, in India as well, and in I had lots of relatives in India and lots of relatives in Canada, so I spent a lot of time in both of those countries as well. But the main home was in Long Island, New York. I grew up in a very Indian home. <laughs> uh, my parents had emigrated from India, so we always spoke Hindi at home and ate Indian food. <laughs> and uh, I read uh, Indian's children books. And <laughs> also, my grandfather was a scholar of uh, Sanskrit, the, the ancient Indian language. And so. I read a lot of Sanskrit literature also when I was growing up, including mathematics literature, which is also one of the inspirations for me. <laughs> My advisor was Andrew Wiles. Uh, he is uh, an amazing mathematician, as everyone knows, <laughs> uh, and just a wonderful person. Uh, I didn't really work on the kinds of things that he works on, but uh, he always has the sense of what is the important mathematics? So I would come to him with various things and he would always have very good advice as to what he thought was more important and what he thought was less important. And that was, that was very, very helpful to me. Uh, and he was always so encouraging, so uh, inspirational, uh, always willing to talk and always excited to hear what I had to say. And that was, uh, that was a wonderful experience. Uh, number theory was also something I liked since, uh, <laughs> since I was a child. <laughs> so uh, I, think, I think if I went into mathematics, it was always pretty clear that I, I would want to do number theory. The classical number theory problems always interested me as far back as I can remember. And I also loved, the kind of mathematics I always liked uh, since I was young was the kind that uh, is explainable to anybody. <laughs> So I really liked this about number theory, that the problems are, are so concrete, you can explain them to anybody, and yet uh, the methods that you need to solve them are so deep. Growing up, as I said, I, I read a lot of Sanskrit works, so a lot of the works that I read were very inspirational to me, particularly Brahmagupta and Bhainini and Pingala. Uh, so those mathematicians were, were a great inspiration to me when I was growing up. Uh, my mother, of course, was my first mathematics teacher. She was probably my biggest inspiration. Uh, and then when I, when I got to college, uh, my advisors, Barry Mazur, Percy Diakonis, uh, were great inspirations. I also had mentors uh, like Joe Gallion and Dave Cargo in the summer. And then when I went to graduate school, of course, there was my advisor, Andrew Wiles, great inspiration. And my other teachers, Peter Sarnak, and John Conway. Uh, so they were, they were also huge inspirations. Uh, she also mentioned maybe Hendrik Lenstra and Don Zagier. <laughs> also spent a lot of time with them when I was a graduate student. And Dick Gross, uh, who I now collaborate with a lot, but he has also been a, a big inspiration. Yeah. Lots, of, <laughs> lots of people have. <laughs> have uh, had an influence on the way I think about mathematics and uh, the people I just mentioned and some others as well, yeah, they were, played a very influential role on me. Yeah, Ramanujan too. Uh, some of the work that I've done was inspired by some of his work. And so, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> He's definitely on the list. <laughs> so I should, I should, I should have, Gauss is probably my biggest mathematical inspiration. <laughs> can't forget him. <laughs> Number theory is often the end goal, but I've gotten, as a result, I've gotten interested in many neighboring areas and, and use the tools from those areas to, to understand the problems in number theory that I've been interested in. 
representation theory has definitely been uh, uh, a major part uh, of a lot of the work uh, that I've uh, been working on for many years. Uh, algebraic geometry, of course, is a, is, plays a big role in, in, in what I do. And, uh, and combinatorics um, is also something that I've been fascinated by since the beginning and it still comes up <laughs> for me. Yeah, so those are probably the main areas that I think about. But a lot of analysis comes into play as well. Algebra, uh, you know, ring theory. So lots of, uh, lots of areas have definitely <laughs> Uh, been of interest to me, uh, although eventually it all gets applied to number theory, <laughs> usually for me, yeah. <laughs> I guess people had been talking about it for so long that it, I guess it wasn't the biggest surprise, <laughs> but of course when it happens it's always a, a nice feeling and a great honor. Yeah, I, ho I hope it won't change my life too much. <laughs> there are many things I want to do mathematically and uh, I hope to continue in the same way. Uh, if it allows me to do some work for mathematics education around the world, uh, I will definitely take that opportunity. If, it, if, if, uh, if being associated with the Fields Mill helps with that, I will, uh, I will definitely be happy to, to do that. But otherwise, I hope I get to still concentrate on my mathematics. <laughs> I, like to, I always like to work on many problems at once. So. There's never really one problem that I'm working on. Uh, so that way if I get stuck on one thing, I can <laughs> go to another. Uh, and also that's more fun for me to have many things going on at once. Uh, so I guess some of the things that people have been talking about here is I guess my work on understanding values taken by polynomials. So polynomials are of course the one of the most fundamental objects in, in mathematics and uh, yeah, throughout the sciences. So mathematicians like to approximate functions by polynomials, they like to study spaces of polynomials, and in particular mathematicians want to know about the values taken by polynomials. Uh, and for a number theorist, we're interested in polynomials with say whole number coefficients, and we're interested in the whole number values uh, of of these functions, polynomial functions. Uh, or if not working over the whole numbers, we can also work over the rational numbers. Uh, for a number theorist, we're interested in, in whole number values taken by polynomials. We're interested in polynomials that have whole number coefficients, and we're interested in the whole number values that are, uh, that are taken by these polynomials. Uh, or if not the whole numbers, we're, number theorists are also interested in rational numbers. Uh, and rational number values. So rational number is a ratio of whole numbers. And so we're interested uh, in polynomials uh, and their whole number values and their rational number values. So a typical example is that goes back thousands of years, the following question, when is a whole number the sum of two squares? Uh, so an ancient theorem about numbers that are the sum of two squares is that if you take two numbers that are each the sum of two squares, then their product is also the sum of two square numbers. Uh, so this is an ancient result, and this was uh, generalized in work of Pramagupta, something that I learned as a child, <laughs> that if you have two numbers that are each a square plus n times a square, then their product is again a square plus n times a square. And that's work of Brahmagupta. And this was then further generalized. Uh, so this was in work in about six, the year 600. And then about 1,200 years later, in the work of Gauss, uh, there was a lot of work in between, but it culminated in work of Gauss, who, who gave a method for, uh, for deciding uh, when you can say, make a statement like this, that if you have a number that's represented by a given quadratic expression, and you multiply it by a number that's represented by a, a second quadratic expression, when will it always be represented by a certain third quadratic expression? Uh, and that is now known as Gauss composition. Uh, and that, that was the starting point of, of my PhD work. Uh, except with, instead of quadratic expressions, I was looking at more general objects. Uh, expressions with more than one variable, higher degree, but uh, it started with this Gauss composition. Uh, 
So one thing that it started with was a simple way of looking at Gauss composition uh, that was inspired by thinking about three-dimensional matrices. Uh, so I, I used to play with many uh, uh, cubes, <laughs> Rubik's cubes, for example, in my room. I, I liked mathematical toys since the very beginning. And one time I thought, well, we always talk about square matrices in school, but what about three-dimensional matrices? Uh, what can you do with them? And just thinking about the simplest kind of three-dimensional matrix, a two by two by two cube of numbers, uh, allowed me to find a simple way of describing Gauss composition. And that simple way of describing Gauss composition then led to a number of generalizations of Gauss composition, uh, about 14 of them. And that's something that I uh, wrote my PhD thesis about. So that was my PhD thesis. <laughs> uh, and it was only after understanding that Gauss composition was just one example. It wasn't an isolated occurrence, but it was just one example of a whole theory. Uh, I went about in trying to understand what one could do with this whole theory. And uh, that's what led me to more analytic questions, questions in analysis, uh, about understanding typical behavior of, of mathematical objects. Things, objects such as number fields, which are field extensions of the rational numbers. How do those behave typically? Uh, so that's, uh, that's something that came out of my thesis later, was understanding analytically what's the typical behavior of certain mathematical objects. Uh, and eventually it led to uh, questions in arithmetic geometry. So things like, uh, if you have a polynomial, say with whole number coefficients, uh, how often does it take a square value? square number value. And so one recent result uh, that's come out of this whole way of thinking is if you take a random polynomial with whole number coefficients of say degree 10 or higher, then the probability that it takes a square value is less than 1%. <laughs> so that's an, a, that's an example of a concrete kind of question that's come about from these uh, higher dimensional matrices <laughs> way of thinking combined with analytic techniques and geometry and geometric techniques.